our world consists of beautiful sights, whether it be flowers, grass, or trees. But what makes everything around us real? Believe it or not, everything represents just forms of matter and energy working together. But the brain allows us to interpret these forms of energy into sounds, sights, and everything else. Everything begins with sight. So right now, I'm standing in the middle of a field. I see green in the grass and brown in the trees. But what's allowing me to interpret this, these waves of energy as color? Some may think it's just the, my eyes, but it's actually the brain doing most of the work. The brain is what interprets these wavelengths of energy into the beautiful colors that we see. It's, a lot, it's what allows us to see and admire everything that's in our world. So believe it or not, vision starts with light. Light first passes through the cornea, which does three-fourths of the focusing, and combined with the lens, it produces a clear image on the retina. The retina is considered part of the central nervous system because of a sheet of cells it contains. These sheet of cells are specifically photoreceptors. Now, photoreceptors are not like other cells. They convert light signals into electrical signals that can be understood by the brain. And once these signals are generated and processed by other cells of the eye, they're sent via the optic nerve to the brain. Not just any part of the brain, the lateral geniculate nucleus that is part of the thalamus. And once these signals are sent to the thalamus, they're relayed to other parts of the brain where they can be processed and stored. You see, the brain proves that anything is possible, that even photons of light can be converted into the sights that surround us. Light comes from the sun and takes this form, yet our brains are able to process scenery such as this and take in its many colors. How is this possible? Color surrounds us in every which way, yet the brain can only detect three colors, red, green, and blue. So how is it possible that we see the colors of the rainbow? Well, the answer lies in the retina, specifically the photoreceptors of the retina. There are two types of photoreceptors within the eye, rods and cones. Rods constitute 90% of the photoreceptors within the eye, yet they control black and white vision. All our color vision stems from our cones, which only constitute 10% of the cells in our eye. Once signals are generated from rods and cones, they're sent via the optic nerve to the brain, where color is understood and perceived. The world is made of so many different sounds, from the wind that surrounds me, to the children playing in the distance, even to the cars moving. Sound surrounds us. But just as sight relies on not only the eyes, but also the brain, hearing also depends a lot on the mechanisms of the brain. In fact, the brain is what interprets these different frequencies of sounds to be one beautiful sound. So after a sound is detected, it travels down the ear canal towards the brain where it's converted from sound waves to electrical signals that the brain can understand. And then after traveling down this pathway, it finally reaches the brain. So as I showed before, the process through which hearing happens is quite simple. Sound comes in the form of sound waves, goes to the ear and finally to the brain. Now whether it be the sound of a cricket or the sound of a car, all sound travels and is collected by the pina, the outer ear. Sound then travels down the auditory canal to the bones of the middle ear, where they push the oval win window and put pressure on the cochlea. Now the cochlea is very important to the nervous system. In fact, separation of frequencies happens within the cochlea. But more importantly, these mechanical vibrations of sound are converted into electrical signals that the brain can understand. And once these electrical signals are generated from the cochlea, they travel down the auditory nerve and finally into the brain. Not just any part of the brain though, the brainstem. And the brainstem then relays these electrical signals to higher order parts of the brain, such as the auditory cortex, where we can perceive sound. You see, sound, sound, sound starts as a pure form of energy, but becomes perceptible, all thanks to the brain. Neuroscience is cool because it allows us to study the brain and its many functions. The brain controls everything we do and helps translate this world of energy. The world consists of just different forms of energy, whether it be photons of light, sound waves, you name it, it's everywhere. But the brain is what makes it all perceivable. In fact, our world consists of just different forms of energy, but the brain is what makes it real.